Good evening, everyone. Uh, we'll be starting now. My name is Adam Lushan, and I will be your moderator for today. It's my honor and privilege to welcome you all to the ordinary level lecture seminar organized, literature lecture seminar organized by the Advanced English Skills Improvement Unit of Royal College. Before moving on, I would like to welcome the principal of Royal College, Mr. M. V. S. Gunathilaka, the vice principal and master of clubs and societies, Mr. T. D. C. P. Amaratunga. Vice Principal and Senior Games Master, Mr. Riaz Aluhar, our teaching in charge, Mrs. Vasana Vijay Singha, the Prefix Council, teachers, students of all ages. Before moving on, also a small re reminder to everyone that if you have any questions about the session today, then please send me or the lecturer a private message via the Zoom chat. You can message us throughout the entire lecture and we will try our best to actually get your uh, questions sorted out and answered for you. So, uh, so now let me introduce you a little bit about our lecturer for today. She is a renowned professional in the education sector. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of Peradeniya, a postgraduate diploma in education from the University of Colombo on TESL, teaching English as a second language, holds a Bachelor of Science and a Master in Science in Psychology and Counseling. She's also, she also holds a Master in Arts in Linguistics. I now introduce to you, Ms. Tanuja Michael. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay, so yes. So let me share my screen. Yes. So what is expected from me is to take you through uh, how to face paper one and what you're supposed to do in paper two. Right, so I'll be discussing in detail um, how to answer paper one and paper two. I'll be doing a few questions also for you to get familiarized with the uh, new format of the paper. So as you know, from this year, the format is going to be um, slightly changed, right? So the new structure of the paper will be, you will have part one separately and part two separately. If you had, uh, I'm sure you had done the grade 10 third term paper. So there you might have seen the part one is separately uh, uh, named as part one, but don't worry, it won't be taken separately at the exam, right? So at the end of the third hour, your, both the papers will be taken together, but they'll be marked separately. Also duration as usual, one hour for paper one and one two hours of paper two. So you have enough time to go through um, see the corrections and then, you know, uh, what is difference this time? The difference is like you are expected to write part one in the given paper itself. All these years we were, you know, kind of, we gave, the, the students were given papers, the candidates were given answer scripts for part one. So from this year, part one should be done in the given paper itself. So just running through about the, the part one here, what we have is uh, same, it's, it's five marks for each context question. What we see here is um, in the first question, you have to identify the poet and the poem, the play and the playwright, the prose and the writer, right? So you'll be getting one mark for that. So earlier we had the second question, you were given two questions, but from this year, you'll be given one, one each. So questions uh, two and three will be testing your uh, intra-textual reference, that is your inferencing skill, how you, you know, kind of, uh, uh, how you, um, the, your knowledge on the context, how you comprehend the question. Also, when it comes to the fourth one, it is always your uh, inference skill, your, respond to the text is tested. At the same time, you also will be tested on your higher order thinking skill, right? So here, your creativity is of immense importance. Therefore, when you are asked to write, um, you know, it will be like, what are the qualities? What is the character traits of this person? What do you think? What do you feel? You know, questions like that. But here, don't give, you know, one word answers. Just make it a sentence to be, uh, you know, score all two marks, right? So we move on to the uh, section B, 
they are it's the normal uh, you get four questions two to two and four marks for the critical evaluation so again the critical evaluation is testing your higher order thinking skill here when you say comprehension you are understanding of the text is expected and mostly you find this answer in the given context itself right and application is like you will be given two uh, words to you know give it in your own words to see how you apply so for the critical evaluation again um you will be asked certain questions about the qualities what do you think the speaker is you know why does he behave in this way all these things here you get four marks keep that in mind therefore you have to write a few sentences now one year the, the question was what is the theme so theme when you write only the theme so think whether it's fair enough to give all four marks so those are a few things right we have to bear in mind right so with this small introduction i'm moving on to a question shall we quickly write this if you wish you can put it on the chat box or you can write and we'll discuss the answers later on i'll give you some time we'll move on quickly if we do it faster we can uh, discuss it faster we can save some time in discussing more questions so this will be how your question paper will be set If you are ready, you can raise your hand. We can discuss. okay i think it's time enough yeah okay just tell me whether this child deserves the mark good is this answer correct the first one does this child deserve the mark usually i showed you earlier it's one mark though it is two questions no two marks there therefore you need to be very careful in answering your questions right so here just think to yourself look at the answer that you have written the first one cannot be given marks why do i say that why do i say that okay this is the reason right so evening star is correct the title is correct but the name is wrong look at the w the child has written right so this is uh, a problematic situation where a lot of children they assume simple w to be the uh, capital w so stick to the given um formation of the letter or the given title the capitals the symbols even the comma big match comma 1983 upside hyphen upside down yeah 
So think of this in the terrorist. Kama, he is watching. So keep these things in your mind, right? Yeah, so the second question, who is referred to as Dao? So Dao here is, who is Dao? Yeah? Yeah, so we need to, why I put this is, so far we have not got a context questions on this. Right? So this is, Thou is the evening star or the goddess Venus, right? If you have written that, your answer is correct. Um, yeah. So here, what is the tone of the speaker? Tone of the speaker is pleading, requesting. Yeah, planet Venus is also correct, right? So when they ask you, what do you understand about thou from these lines? What will you say? What do you understand about thou from these lines? So we said the speaker is requesting or pleading. So for him to plead, what qualities do you think the goddess Venus could possess? Right? So what kind of qualities do you think the goddess Venus could have to possess? So it's your understanding. It's not written. I mean, it's your high order thinking skill which is tested. So read carefully and answer. Right? So, yeah. So helping nature, yeah. Godly nature. Ability of power and protection, yeah. So these could be possible answers. She is powerful enough to protect human, yeah. So these could be taken as correct answers. Good. So, so this is, these are some answers where I want to show you examples where, you know, look at this Nile and it's given in simple, but John Keats is correct. Therefore, this child will not get any mark at all. So no half marks in literature, therefore you will not get any marks. Here, Haran Bernard written in simple lecture. Look at the C. That's why I told you, the, the, the uh, W I showed you earlier, both look the same, but the look at the formation, the size of the letter, right? So be very careful. One mark, losing one mark is a big thing. So stick to your content page always, right? Stick to the content page. Um, sometimes you might have um, certain different spellings, especially houseman, AE houseman, uh, not in the new books, but in the old books, we have find houseman, H-O-U-S-M-A-N. So if that is so, both the spellings will be given now. But the best thing is to stick to the content page of your anthology, right? The Evening Star gives protection to the uh, earth. Yeah, as soon as the... Okay, very nice. Your answers are good. Right? Yeah. So, she's a protector of human. She seems to be very helpful. Yeah? Okay. Right. So, let's do this quickly. Good. Those who have done good, we'll discuss. Right, you want to discuss? Right, from where are these lines taken? Who wrote them? Um, yes, 
B, and then got blood. Check your spellings, check your titles. Uh, always remember when it comes to the title, the first letter of the first letter of each word is capitalized, except for articles, uh, prepositions, right? So keep in mind um, when you answer the first letter when you when it comes to the titles of the poetry, the first letter of every word is capitalized, right? So here, what we have is, um, I saw some answers and then got that. Can we, can we take it as a correct answer? And then got that? Or the and then got that? Check your spellings. Right, yeah. So who is the speaker? Why I put this question? is a lot of children mistake the speaker to be the lump of clay. It is not, right? The goblet, the question he asks is, how did you feel when you were being twirled on the potter's wheel? So now it's a perfect red, red from head to heel, you know? Yes, so the answer should be then goblet. What is meant by the present form? What is meant by the present form? So once again, it's a goblet, right? Form of the goblet or the goblet. Yeah. Why do you think the speaker speaks in this manner? So this again is a high order thinking skill where you'll be given two marks. Why does this? I felt a vast feeling of sorrow to be cast into my present form. Yeah. Yes, but do you think, why do you think the speaker speaks in this manner? So the speaker is feeling of sorrow to be cast into my present form. The speaker is nostalgic, feeling sad about the past. Right? Yeah, Miss, can you repeat the C question? It's unclear. Okay, why do you think the speaker speaks in this manner? The speaker is the goblet. So why do you think the goblet speaks like this? Okay, why do you think the speaker speaks like this? So the speaker speaks like this because it was transformed. Did it like the transformation? No, then why do you think the speaker speaks in this manner? Because it is sad, because it is not happy, because it painful transformation, those, those could be possible answers. Disappointed lost its freedom. Yeah, now, like, it's like cage now. Lifeless, dead in its original form, right? Uprooted and dislocated. Yeah, these are all uh, correct answers. Yeah, it has lost, lost its freedom. Very good. Right. Can I go to the next question then, children? Okay. Let's go. Right. So always the first two questions will be on poetry, then um, prose, right? So six questions in part one, context section A. Um, so two, 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 that's how the six are counted. So the first two will be on poetry, second two on prose, third two on drama. If you are not able to identify the uh, the Prose. You just read it carefully and see the tone in which prose put this kind of a uh, utterance or a, or a, a sentence appear. Right? Think of the tone. Yeah, you can also say the lumber room by Saki, right? Because the, the prose is known as that. Munro, yeah, then also you will be given the mark. So who speaks, who is the speaker? The aunt. To whom are these words spoken? 
to Nicholas. Very good. So going to the third one. How would you describe the speaker's qualities as reflected through these lines? How do you describe the speaker's qualities as reflected? So who is the speaker? Who is the speaker? Art. So here, speaker's qualities, authoritative, selfish, right? Don't talk nonsense, said the prisoner in the tank, arrogant. Right? These could be uh, possible answers. So put them into sentences. This time you'll have only a specific uh, space. Um, so work according to the given, uh, minimize your answer according to the given, right? Only specific answers, right? So she seems to be rude also. Yeah, right? So ill mannered, authoritative, arrogant. All these are possible answers. So that's why I told you the fourth question is always testing your high order thinking skill where your uh, competence in your interpretation, um, uh, your literary skills, uh, your response to the test. Now this is res giving response to the text, how you respond to it, how you look at it, right? Your feelings, attitudes, right? So that's why you are given two marks. So... Um, you should be able to do it. Yeah. Can I go to the next one? Right. Will the 2021 oil paper part one be categorized uh, as poem, prose, and drama? Um, that is what the given prototype paper says. You might have seen that uh, orange color prototype paper. Uh, according to that paper, yes, first section is poetry, then prose, then drama. Yeah, so here I saw many of your answers. Some have written the wave. Then your answer will be wrong. The wave is wrong. It has to be wave. Wave by Sonali Dharaniya Gala. Right? So who are referred to as they? Right? They. They will come. So they are referred to here as uh, Archie and Sia or Sonali's parents. What is the tone of the speaker? Right? They will come later. They will come, Steve said. So he's reassuring the kid, right? They were crying. Vic stopped crying and snuggled. So for Vic to stop crying and snuggle, what kind of a tone do you think? Right, so assurance, giving assurance, giving hope, right? Um, what aspect of the speaker's character is revealed in these words? Character, qualities. Hmm? Yeah, so you can see his ability to console his children, his optimistic nature. He seems to be very calm. So now he also, she, she also feels bad thinking that she couldn't stop her pills, that she could have done it, right? So he is trying to help her to get rid of that guilty feeling, a good quality, right? Um, so yeah, 
of positive minded yes optimistic right so how to find out the tone so tone read it carefully now you are familiar with the text read it carefully see what how the speaker is like this appears very very often you know the tone the the technique you know um yeah now the tone will differ according to the context right now at if you talk about the same thing you know we see how at a point uh, uh, sonali behaves and how she behaves in another point right so if they ask you they might hear the speaker of course that's okay here the speaker is um, steve if they ask you the speaker this is the tone no? now when you when they ask you about sonali you have to say narrator or sonali is also fine but even in an autobiography you have to say it is the narrator right yeah um then i'll go to the next question okay what is this Sorry. It says uh i see a lot of uh, mistakes problems in the capitals and symbols i think that's because you are typing no and then that when you do the real exam paper please stick to the proper way of writing okay um some children want me to go through the previous question quickly is this the one you wanted is it the one you want right so i wonder which question you want and out of this part c okay so here part c what aspect of the speaker's character is revealed in these words so when you speak about the speaker's character look at the given context carefully right look at the given context carefully they will come later they will come steve said vic stopped crying and snuggled into steve so a little child snuggling into his father what does it show can he be a strict father can he be a caring father he says they will come later they will come so he is assuring the child is crying because our chance is not there so when the when the children with wife is also quite upset sonali so when they are he he knows he feels that they are not in a correct mood so he is trying to take them to the proper mood you know trying to cool them down 
trying to ease the pain, the mental pain they are in, right? So what can you say about a person who is like this? So you can say giving assurance. My video is turned off. You want to see me? Okay, <laughs> right. So, yeah. So such a person will be very optimistic. Optimistic is looking at the positive side of a situation. They will come later, they will come. So giving assurance, right? Giving some kind of a hope, um, you know, kind of uh, uh, trying to help the child come out of the um, situation he is in, the negativity, right? So he could be optimistic, he could be helpful, so those are the things that you have to write. Okay? Yeah? Can I discuss the next question now? If the others are ready? When I click the next question, you know, my video gets off. Don't worry about that. Not this, no? this one. No. So I have skipped. Yeah, we did this. I'll go to the other one later. Yeah. So if she says no, you tell her you are leaving. Do you see? Um, Miss, what does it mean when they ask for the tone of the speaker? So again, when you talk about the tone, you see how the words are spoken. Right? Whether it is rude, whether it is confident, whether it is hopeful, right? Whether the person is sad, happy, okay? So if she says no, you tell her you are leaving. Do you see? From where are these lines taken and who wrote them? A twilight of a queen? Kinoshita. Even if you write just Kinoshita, yeah, you'll be getting the mark. Kinoshita. Uh, twilight, no other there. Twilight of a crane. Um, who is referred to as she? She is so. Uh, who is referred to as you? You is uh, yo yo. Right? So, again, what qualities of the speaker do you think are evident through these lines? So, again, qualities. Yeah. So, greedy, yeah, okay, greed, selfishness. Insensitive also can be taken, money-minded, materialistic, manipulative, greedy, rude, yeah. And he's teaching all the bad things. If she says no, you tell her you are leaving. Do you see? Right? Something which is not good, right? Yeah, the speaker seems abusive, greedy, and selfish. Yeah, materialistic, good. Opportunistic, yeah, he is opportunistic, right? So um, in this drama, we see how um, Kinoshita tries to portray the difference between the, uh, the, the Japanese society before modernization and after modernization. So here, so stands as a symbol of unspoiled Japanese society, right? Um, avaricious also can be taken as a right answer, yes. How many qualities should we write? Okay, it's like this. Now you have only two, um, about two lines to write your answer now, so you can't write paragraphs. So stick to the uh, qualities that you see here. Not that we're expecting you to write 10, no. I can't give you a number. Then you will say, okay, teacher told like this and we can, we can write this number of uh, qualities. So you think, you see, and then you write, right? There's no specific uh, numbers. Some children ask how many quotations should we write? Uh, for part two, there also you don't have number of quotations. Um, 
when I when you say number of qualities, they should be relevant. The quotation should be relevant. If the quotations are not relevant, you can't uh, continue with that, right? The, likewise, if the qualities you give are not relevant, you won't get marks. If the number is not the matter, it has to be uh, suitable. It has to be. It has to go with the question and go with the given uh, context, right? What is the answer for the second one? If she says no, you tell her you are leaving. Do you see? Who is referred to as she? If she says, so here she is Sue. Right? Each one per passage is enough. Like it's suitable for the, uh, yeah. Um, that's why I told you, I cannot tell you this number of qualities, this number, I, I don't want to give you a number. What I say is it, it has to be suitable. The numbers that you give, the words that you give have to be suitable for the answer. Right? Okay. I think I did not uh, do the previous one or what? We didn't do this, no? Which second one is what's the answer for the second one? Which second one, child? Okay. Can we discuss? Right. Can we discuss that? Right, so you are a rude, ill-bred man. Decent people don't talk to a woman like that. From where are these lines taken and who wrote them? Check your anthology. I hope you have the books with you. Check your anthology and just see whether it is the bear or bear. That's why I told you when you write at a rate, sometimes you know. But you tend to forget. Sometimes you tend to not to write what is proper. Right? The bear or bear? It has to be the bear. Who is the speaker? So sometimes children don't know who the speaker is. If you don't know, look at the wordings. You are a rude, ill-bred man. So we have only three characters, right? We have only three characters. Um, Luca, Papua, and Spono. Decent people don't talk to a woman like that. So this obviously has to be a woman. So there's only one woman in the, you know, in the whole uh, drama, right? So um, it has to be Papua. Yeah, you all are right. I accidentally continue. Okay, right, no problem. Yes, Papua, the video should be right. Yeah, should we write full sentences for the second and third question? No, you don't need to. Who is the speaker, Papua? 
who is the ill-bred man the speaker refers to Smanoff. Just one word answers are fine at this stage. Right? Okay. What theme of the drama is expressed through these lines? I don't, I didn't see any answers for this. Men's hatred towards women. Okay. Male chauvinism. You are a rude, ill-bred man. Decent people don't talk to a woman like that. Class difference. Both of them are in the same class. Both of them are landlords. So both of them belong to the upper classes. There's no doubt about it. Think, think, think. Yeah, I found the answer. I, yeah, some have written inconsistency. Not at this point. Uh, I see some answers. Let others also try. We'll give some time. The theme is male domination and female slavery is expressed here. Yeah, now... Papua says, decent people don't talk to women like that. So during, um, during this 19th century Russian era, um, you know, men had the privilege of uh, even beating women. They were legally given that uh, grant, you know, not good, you know, human rights and all that. But th that's why the answer, female emancipation or emancipation goes better because decent people don't talk to a woman like that. So this is what Anton Chekhov wanted to bring about in the society, in his, in his society. Perception, change in perception, his audience, what he wanted to give, it, give to his audience, right? No respect in words towards opposite genders. Yeah, so what, what, how would you describe the theme? Emancipation of women? And you can even explain a little more, right? Emancipation of women, yeah. Right. So with that, so again, you also could have, uh, now, uh, as I told you, the greatness of misconception in the minds of youngsters. Uh, misconception the minds of youngsters no 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 basically this deals with you know inconsistency of human nature um, female emancipation of you also can see the 19th century the, the they are reflect the 19th century russian society right how what existed during that time so here go by the given lines carefully and then uh, come to a conclusion what it could be, right? So independence of women or, or, um, or emancipation of female, right? So we also see how it, it is also a kind of criticism of the conventional um, Russian society, right? Conventional attitudes, yeah? So you can elaborate a little more, no harm. Emancipation is, uh, what is the meaning of emancipation? Yeah, Eman uh, emancipation is freedom. Emancipation, EMA, freedom, right? So actually during this time, men were really chauvinistic, very dominant, right? So male dominance was, you know, it was highly there. So that is why Anton Chekhov, um, you know, creates a character like Papua to show that female also could, should have, not could have actually, should have their freedom. So here, uh, by law, uh, men had the power, men had the right even to beat women, as I told you earlier. Right? So maybe that's why he wanted to change the society to educate the people, right? So here, Female were not educated during this time. Uh, they didn't don't have that right. So maybe the Russian societies need the thoughts of female emancipation in the 19th century. Okay, fine, lovely. Discuss more about the themes in this drama. Yeah, themes, yeah, I will do. My, the questions that I have given. Okay, so here, when you talk about the themes, 
of uh, the bear, it also can be taken as taken as um, as I told you, um, independence of women, average or uh, greed will be another theme. Also, the the close relationship between love and hatred is also expressed. Uh, and also inconsistency of human behavior, that human beings, uh, people are not very consistent, not very strong all the time, not, you know, they are changeable. That also can be taken as a theme. We also can talk about um, loneliness and companionship also as a theme. Loneliness and companionship. Infidelity is also one thing. Hypocrisy, yeah? infidelity. What is infidelity? You are not faithful to your partner. Right? Now, Papua says, I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm going to bury myself between four walls. Um, you know, I'm, so I'm dead. I'm also dead with him, all that, right? Um, so, um, by saying so, she falls in love with Sponoff. So according to the 19, now, now of course we have, our people can marry if the husband is dead or, you know, but during that time it was different. Right? That's why this uh, infidelity um, came up as a thing, right? Infidelity. Also, um, yeah, condition of women in Russian society also can be taken as a thing, condition of women in Russian society, right? Um, yeah, so pretentious nature uh, in human, yes, can be taken as another thing, right? So anything else before I go to the next slide? So with this, I'll be discussing part two. Uh, if you don't mind, can you give us a 10 minutes break? Uh, it's only a two hour. Um, I think the, you will get the uh, uh, telecast thing on. Uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm not the organizer. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, we will also be putting the link on the chat, boys, uh, and all students. So. You can access the link through the chat. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Uh, the many references of fire, gunpowder, rockets, things of the warfare nature. Yes. So it also, you know, the, we saw a lot of changes during that time. So these are all with reference to that. Um, yes. And then so talking about paper two. What do you know about paper two? I know you know a lot. So paper two, as you know, you'll be marked like this. You'll be getting seven for content, organization four, language four, altogether 15 marks, 15 into um, four, it's 60. So my advice for you is attempt part one really well. Attempt part one really well. Why do I say that? Your overall grade depends on your part one mark. If you take about 25, 30, 35 for part one, you can calculate the rest. What you would, I mean, how much you could take for part two, right? How many marks? So part one is not difficult at all, right? Um, why do I say that? Now, for example, we saw very silly mistakes in part one, the first question, A, who is the, what is the poem, who is the writer? So it's only a matter of correcting your formation of letter, correcting your commas, you know. So get up every day early morning, I showed you the content page, do, uh, you know, just sit somewhere and try to write it every day. Take five minutes, write this every day, practice it. Right, it's easy. So try your best to do part one really well. Um, 
you are given one hour, but focus, try your best to finish it as early as possible so that you will have ample time for part two, right? So after doing part one, check your paper, do a quick uh, rush through the paper, see whether you have written it correctly, especially the A part. Otherwise, you are losing six marks, right? Then go to part two, right? So what, what should you bear in mind when you answer your part two? What should you bear in mind when you, um, when you um, talk about part two? So these are the uh, bullet points that we expect out of your answers. You should be able to analyze and address the question. Selected relevant content and organized an answer relevant to the question. Read it carefully. Selected relevant content and organized an answer relevant to the question. So your answer should be relevant. Sometimes we see answers, you know, we can really see that it is a answer which has been by hearted. So be careful. Right? Don't do that. So you have to be very um, careful not to reproduce answers. Okay? So familiar with text and quote relevantly and at appropriate moments to build up an argument. So what you are trying to do is your flow of the answer you should exhibit the examiner that you're familiar with the text and quote relevantly. So when I go to seminars, uh, different schools, they, the first question they ask, how many quotations to write? It is not the number of quotations. It is the relevancy. It has to be relevant to the question. If they ask you about uh, Papua, Papua or about female emancipation, if you write about Luca, I mean, you might have, uh, uh, I mean, a higher number of quotations, but will it be appropriate? Think on that. Also, you should be able to build up an argument depending on the question, right? And then comprehended and appreciated the text and so can write with understanding and confidence. Exhibit confidence, right? How are you going to exhibit confidence? The way you have written should show, should uh, illustrate that you are confident, that you have comprehended, right? Appreciated the text, okay? And the next, the very important bullet point, able to write with correct grammar and spelling. Very, very important. Your ability to use correct grammar and spelling. You get four marks for that. Right, very important. So your subject verb agreement, your use of you know um, how where you use how you use um, descriptive words, hmm? um, your knowledge in you know adjectives, adverbs, how how you use them. Um, very very important. Then related the experience they gain to the world around them. This is also very important. How you relate this experience to the world around you. Now, for example, when you let me talk about uh, Maya Angelou's, um, what is that? I know why the cage bird sings. Um, it talks about the blacks and the whites, right? how the privileged and the underprivileged, how they were kind of, um, how the social disparity existed. Yeah. Um, how, the, how the minority blacks suffered in the hands of the majority whites. Yeah. So uh, what do you remember? Anything that you remember related to this? A recent happening in America? No, uh, where are the where are the uh, the black? Yes, I don't remember the name. Yeah, 
um, the police officer kills a black, a white police officer kills, yeah, so color discrimination. So can we use these in your answers? Right? Some, some, uh, George? Um, not quite sure. So, yeah. So here, um, you can bring your experience, related to the experience again to the world around them. So you can talk about these things in your answers. And then the last thing, look critically at the text and experience gained by it. So your ability to look at the text critically. So this refers to your originality, right? So your, your, how, you, how you write the answers, how original they are. Yeah, now you could be really creative. So how do you exhibit your creativity? Hmm? So when you cite out, when you cite other examples, you get more marks. Yeah. So when you look at it critically, you look at both sides. How you bring your reading into your answers. It's not only the book, not only quotations from the book. It can be outside also. Right? Your knowledge, how you bring your knowledge into the answer is very, very important. Yeah? Um, yeah, but then, okay, right. Uh, right, okay. So I told you, you'll be getting seven marks of content. Very huge mark. When you say seven marks of content, here, what is expected is how you prioritize your facts. I will tell you how to write an answer also after describing this, how you, how you bring the facts from the text, how you prioritize facts, which one is which one I'm going to write first, and then which one I would talk about second, right? So uh, then uh, how you present your uh, the, the, the bullet points that you have um, jot down, very important. Then how you evaluate it, how you critically evaluate it. As I told you earlier, your personal response. How you respond to this given question, your personal views, right? And also your creativity is also um, highly sought when it comes to content, seven months, right? So your content means you are addressing the question, you have selected facts carefully, well selected, well presented, You're, you have prioritized your content and you have a very logical argument. You show personal insight, you have critical perspective, right? Content when it comes to content, your creativity, how you reflect your creativity in your answer is also very important. Yes, so you ask a question, is, is it compulsory to quote the lines in part two? Yes, it is very, very important, but it has to be relevant. Otherwise, there is no point. Right, organizing. What do you mean by organizing? Organization. We have seen papers where they, uh, from the beginning to the end, it's only one, uh, one paragraph. From the beginning to the end. It cannot be like that. You have to paragraph them. Right? You have to paragraph them. So it's, it's very important that you are, Answer is relevant, which is you address the question. Your answer has some kind of a, a cohesion. It's um, the, the answer from one paragraph to the next. It's very nicely connected, right? Um, also, how you how you support. Now, one child asked me whether it's important to write quotations. It is. Right, when it comes to uh, organization, you always see to this, whether you have quoted relevantly, and that's why I told you, not the number of quotations, whether it is relevant. 
reporting is very important and it has to be relevant. The very important thing, your answer should be paragraph, well ordered, right? You, have, you should have divided your paragraph. Um, organization also means you have a nice introduction and a nice conclusion. In between, you have your supporting paragraph, very important. So in organization, you are developing your argument, building up a kind of a drive, right? How you move on from point to point, how you bring out your point of view, how you bring out your argument, uh, how you move on, right? So descriptors are, can you explain? Yeah, descriptors are what you are going to do, right? How, what is, what, how, you are, how your answer is looked at. Right, you call it. Uh, I'm describing what is expected in um, content, what is expected in organization, right? So they are described. I'm describing now. Okay, right. Um, yes, and then. Um, how can I uh, obtain marks from content? I gave you, right? Content. Content is um, how you, how you uh, bring out your facts, how you pr prioritize them, the most important to the least important, how you present your facts in favor of uh, your question or using relevant facts. Um, how you use your creativity into this, how you connect certain, how you respond to it. Okay, those are the ones. Should we insert quotations into the, yeah, you can. You can embed the quotations in your answers also, embedding. So for example, she fell, so you can say, she fell within the inverted commas and uh, continue with your answer, right? Angry, shrilling, you know, all these things, you can just embed the quotations into your answer. Uh, if you don't use quotation, will the marks be deducted? So that is, um, I hope you are listening to me. So if I say you need quotations, means you need quotations. Yeah, there's no two thoughts about it. Okay, because it's, it's not hard children, write it somewhere, look at it every day morning, just read it. Don't make it a big, um, you know, kind of a botheration. Like the subject that you are doing, yeah? Then you will love the subject. Right, so how much are we getting for language? Language, four. So what does language do? What does language do? Yeah, so language, as I told you earlier, it's your correct grammar and um, structure. So your subject verb agreement, the tense, right? Your spellings. Some children are very, you know, you know, the youngsters, they are very famous for writing this SMS language. Don't do that. SMA, right? So find something, something. Um, B, T, W. Yeah, so don't use, this is literature. You are testing your language also. Yeah? So very important. So your vocabulary, don't write the same word over and over again. Use the words. You are, when you practice, use a thesaurus. Use other words without saying big all the time. You can use huge, enormous. You know, you can use different words, right? Don't stick to one set of words. Use different words to show the richness in your vocabulary, right? Also, your style. When we read answers, we know this child's style is this. So you develop a personal style. That's why there's no the answer for literature. Uh, you develop your personal style, how you look at it, how you develop your, uh, you, can, you can look at other answers and develop yourself, your writing, but it doesn't mean that you can learn things by heart and reproduce them. Right? It doesn't mean that you can learn and reproduce. Don't do that. How can we practice our timing for part two? Very good question. How to, um, um, 
how to break paragraphs like there are the structure. Okay, so now um, the first question that you asked, how to how do we practice our timing in part two? I would advise you to uh, limit your part one for maybe some children finish within 30 minutes, some children take about 45. So use about 30 to 45 or 50 to use your part one, finish your part one and then go to part two children. Part two, how you can practice is by doing, writing, keep writing, keep writing. Maybe the first few days you look at the anthology, you look at your notes and then write. By and by you will get used to it, right? So once you get used to it, it's easy for you. Uh, the flow is there in your mind then because you are doing it every day, you know, right? So practice, sit for half an hour, Write a question, see how much you have written for. So next day, same question. Maybe you can, you know, have a timetable, right? So I'm going to do this, you know. So how to break paragraphs? Uh, is, there a, is there any structure? So that's why I told you, I will, I will talk to you about paragraphing in a, in a couple of minutes after finishing this. Yeah. Miss, do they give paper two after one now? No, I hope, um, I actually cannot say anything, but you usually your other papers, uh, they're taken, um, given at once, right? And taken at once after the third hour. That is what is uh, done to the other subjects, right? So we'll expect this also to be in the same manner. Ms. will be part one and part two be collected together. That is what is being done right now. So far, your O-level papers, part one and two, they are taken together, right? Not separately. Will a large amount of marks be deducted due only to spelling errors? So correct your spellings. Miss, please do give us some model essay questions for practice at home. Good. For how many pages should we write? Again, the same answer, children. Uh, how many pages should we write? the essay type answers. It's not the number of pages again, it's the relevancy of the question, it's the relevancy of your answer, how you have the flow of your answer, right? How you connect one paragraph to the next. Um, Miss, can we include two quotes in one paragraph? So that is your personal style. That's why I cannot say you use this number of paragraphs. But all what I could say is it has to be relevant, right? Uh, logical argument is the flow of your answer, how you develop, right? How many minutes should we write, take to write an essay answer? So you have four questions in part two. So if you, part one is one hour, part two is two hours. So if you divide like that, you will be having about half an hour for each paper, each, each question. So the best thing is that I told you, finish part one as quickly as possible, check the answers, go to part two, right? So your timing, you have to practice at home, not at the exam. How do we avoid paraphrasing? Yeah, um, don't paraphrase. If that's, that's what I told you, if you write, daily, you will get into this uh, practice. Um, don't paraphrase. According to the question, read carefully. Use the question words in your answers, keywords. Use the author's name time to time. Right? Don't write the story again. It's not the story that we need. That's I, I read your list. I gave you a list. Right, prioritizing facts. Some children, they write only the story. So this is something, you know, your, your, how you think your creativity is important here. Right, so you need to practice. Do they consider handwriting when marking? Obviously, yes, it should be readable. Yeah, otherwise, how can we read? 
can you describe different ways to personalize an essay? Yes. So the, uh, I told you while practicing, you can read other answers, better answers, and develop your personal style. Right? Um, when you describe the event, can you write the story at some places? Yes, so you had to go with the story. What I told you was not to paraphrase. Right? Um, when we write quotations, compulsory for them um, to be in, no, no, no. It doesn't have to be in order. Now, it has to be according to the argument that you are uh, putting forward. So it depends. Um, then again, it's about the novel. Okay. I actually did not uh, have uh, section B because there are three novels. I cannot, different children do different novels. Therefore, I cannot. Um, talk about all these things within these two hours, therefore I skipped novel. Because when one does vendor, the other would do um, bring in Tony Home or Prince and the Pauper. So it might be unfair. Therefore I did not choose novels. If you have any questions, yes, you are welcome. We'll go to the next one. Yes, what is this? Yeah. You ask timing, questions. Yes, yeah, very important. Right? So timing is very important. Um, in answering questions. So here, pay attention to the keywords given. Pay attention to the keywords given. Right? Um, I have given you an example. Yeah, what do you have to do first? Read the question carefully. Now, this is something that you could do to any subject. Right? So, first, draw a mind map or the bullet points. Now, you are given 10 minutes extra reading time, right? You are given 10 minutes extra reading time. So what you could do, utilize that 10 minutes, draw a mind map, draw a mind map, and then um, prioritize the points. If you have put in bullet points, just I spoke to you about prioritizing facts. So you can prioritize by putting one. I'm going to talk about this at, as the first um, idea, then at the second, then at the third, right? So prioritize your uh, mind map and then start writing. So before that, um, you have to read the question carefully, underline the keywords. Um, usually what happens at the exams, you might have noticed, you might have noticed um, you sometimes come home and tell, ah, I forgot to write this. Have you said that? I forgot to, I forgot to write this point. I forgot to do this point. I could have written this. Have you? Right? So, um, you might have told that after coming uh, coming out of the out, out of the exam hall, I forgot to write this point. The reason is it takes some time for your mind. You whatever you have studied, um, everything is stored in your long term memory. It takes some time for you to um, you know that to be sent to the short term memory. So the best thing, jot down a few points, maybe one or two. And by the time you start writing the answer, your brain will give all the answers to you. So it's very important that you develop your mind map in order to write. So your answer should be like a burger. What do I mean? 
what do I mean by burger? Tasty, right? Yeah, appetizing. We didn't have exams. No, oh yes. You all had one, right? Only one, grade 10, 30. Grade 10, 30. We didn't have exams. I know, I feel sorry. Yeah, what to do? At least uh, you all had one test, no, 30. 10, 30, we all had this jam, right? Early January or late Jan. So, yeah, we have to have an answer like a burger. Very good. Very good. Um, lovely. Very good. So the burger is incomplete without the top part, without the bottom part, and the appetizing stuff in between. Therefore, the burger, keep in mind so that you won't forget. Some answers, there's no introduction, there's no conclusion, only the body is there. So divide your paragraphs, structure your paragraphs. This is organization. So hereafter, you shouldn't forget. It has to be a burger. Introduction. Some children write introductions which are not relevant at all. He was born in this year. He died in this year. He is like this. We don't want. Do examiners know that? Answer relevantly. Right? Answer relevantly. So, in answering relevantly, your introduction should be um, relevant to the question also. Right? So, your introduction should be relevant to the question. And what do you write in conclusion? What should you write in conclusion? Yeah, your conclusion should be the summary of what you have written here. More or less, it's like the introduction, but you are using other words, using different words, right? Um, so can we write a question within 45 minutes? It's okay. Will I be able to limit the time? Um, if you write a question for 45 minutes, 45 into four, how many minutes? Think of that. Or unless you practice yourself thoroughly to do part one within half an hour. Right? You can. You have enough time. You can. Um, Madam, should we write about the orthophase type questions? That, that's okay. That's your style. What I said was not to write irrelevant details about the author. He was born here. He went there. He wrote this much of novels. That is not relevant, no? You can say author that, that you have to say, no? Author and the book or the novel written by or, you know, the prose written by. Yeah, that, that of course is fine. Um, this is enough for the introductive. This time, will they make English lit or level exam easy? How do I know? <laughs> will they make the English lit or level exam easy? How do I know? <laughs> okay, let's go to the next question. Yeah, so your essay should be like this the burger with a lot of sesame on top, right? And beautify by paragraph one, two, three. Then give a nice conclusion. So introduction, your body paragraphs, and then the conclusion. Right? Time duration, can, can, madam, can you tell Tell us the time duration for the first paper again. So your first paper is one hour. Second paper is two hours. That is the model paper. What is said in the model, what is given in the model paper. Right? That is what is given in the model paper. 
one hour and two hours. And we hope that uh, your papers will be collected, both the papers will be collected together. Uh, Miss, in the conclusion, should we give a summary of the points we wrote in the essay type answer? Yes. Yeah, it's good if you could. Then it's that is how it is normally done. Part one, Madam, can you tell us? Uh, part one, we have to write long or short answers. One word answers are okay. First question, second question, and third question. But the fourth question is usually testing your high order thinking skill. So you cannot give words, no. So you have to write in sentences. And it's a two marker question. Also, when it comes to the novel, section B, you have uh, four marks in the fourth question. And in the first three, you have two marks each. So write according to that. Uh, can you show that? Yeah, I'll show the model paper. I'll give you a small activity and I'll show you the model paper while you write so that I will be utilizing that time also. Right? How can we memorize the bunch of quotations for our analysis? Don't memorize. Write it somewhere where you, you know, during the day, maybe near the mirror, maybe in your room. Write it in big handwriting, display it, read it every day. You will learn it. Word limit for and this is essay. So there's, we cannot say this is the number. So for half an hour, how much you could write? Uh, papers are given together. Uh, part one and two separate papers from this year. Part one is a separate paper. Part two is a separate paper. But hopefully, like other subjects, part one and two will be collected together. Is it okay if I write the quotation before writing the analysis? Yeah, your style. Usually we give the point, then the illustration, then the, yeah. Miss, in the question with an extract of the novel for the question four, with four marks, should we write four points in order to get the full mark? Uh, will full marks be awarded? Yeah, I have two points. Explain briefly. Yeah, so think of the, if they mostly it's about qualities, why do you think, how do you feel, question like that. So within that given um, limited um, paper, you think how much you could write. Uh, part one can one answer except, yeah, you can write one word answers, um, except for a question like, how do you feel? What do you think? Now, those questions you can't write in one, one word. No? They, of course, you have to think a little. Right? Okay. So, I'll move on to the next one. So, this I chose this 2016 question to discuss the essay type. Um, now, here, what do you think of this question? Now, this is a do you agree question. Do you agree? How will you structure your answer? I'll give you some time. See how you are going to structure your answer. This is the paper somebody wanted to see. I'm sure your schools would have got this. The prototype paper. Yeah, so somebody asked for the time. So as you can see, here it says,
part one, one hour. Yeah. Then part two, two hours. You can see the last the last question. We have two lines as the space. So here, this time they will say rows, and here we started with the poetry. And then drama. So it's easy for you. It's actually being very uh, examinee friendly because you know what appears where. So it's only a matter of thinking whether it is a, um, whether it is a twilight of a crane or from the bell. So section B also, it's easy. You don't need to read all three, right? They have given which novel it is, right? So it's quite easy. So look at the space here. Right, the part two goes like this, where you have to write um, in another in the paper that is provided by the um, department. So can I uh, go back to that? Can I give that uh, question again? I'll share my screen. Yeah, I'll send it to the organizers. Can you put it to the group? Okay, I'll send it to the organizers. Where can I access the prototype paper? I'll give it to the organizers so that they will um, see how to send it to you. Why did they do this method suddenly and they choose this year? To be, um, it's good for you. You are benefited. Candidates are benefited. Right? You are given which text it is. In the previous paper, it doesn't say whether it is Venros, which you have to read all three. And this time, if you are choosing vendor, you can straight away go to vendor saving time. If you are read Dream Prince and the Pauper, you can straight away go to the print and paper without reading all three. Previous paper, you had to read everything to find your text. So it's good for you. So. What novel will you prefer to get marks easy? <laughs> it depends on you, not on the novel. It depends. Um, not on the length also actually, how much we have worked, how much we have read, how to be creative when writing an essay type answer. Good question, how to be creative. Now, when you talk only about the given poem or the prose, you are just um, um, writing what is given in the text. So creativity is how you look at it. What do you find outside the world, similar to this or opposite this? Do we have such people in our society also? Which drama is easy? Again, the same answer. It depends on you, not on the drama.
right? How to build up an own style for essay type questions. So building up your own style depends on how much you read, right? How much you read, how much you get facts from others. You can read sample answers and develop your way of writing. How can you remember the quotation of a novel? Again, you have to learn it by heart, quotations. Maybe you can um, kind of um, draw a chart. For example, if you say, if you talk about Twilight of a Crane, now we know the different themes, right? So Twilight of a Crane. Um, humanity, what are the quotations for humanity? Um, so think like that. Write it and keep. Read it every day. Read the quotations every day. Then you will remember. Right? Then again, if you talk about um, um, money versus people, have, like money, so main theme, right? Capitalism. So where do we find quotation related to capitalism? Capitalism versus humanism. Where do we find uh, quotations related to this? Write it somewhere. So it's only a matter of working a little harder. Right? So nature. So you can talk about these things. How to beautify the answers for the essay type questions. So your vocabulary Develop a rich vocabulary. Um, use a thesaurus when you practice answers. Right? How to learn fictions easily. You have to read. Read, read and read. Right? Sometimes you might find words very unfamiliar. Use a dictionary. Like the stories. Appreciate the characters. Think of the characters. Think what they do. Right? Uh, Ma'am, should we write literary devices separately after the appreciation? Um, if you want to talk about literary devices, use them with the, um, with, the, with the answer. Now, for example, you can say um, Maya Angelou personifies the cage bird, the free bird, you know, he stands in graveyard, you know, so you can use them in the context, right? So in part one, you also have, um, this is also, uh, I mean, you will get this also, what is the literary device? What is the effect? What is the tone? So these are also pos possible part one questions, the tone of something, right? So literary device, so repetition, what does it say? So effect is, why is it used? Um, so think of those things. How many lines are sufficient for quotation? So number of lines quotation also depends on your answer, depends how relevant it is, okay? Now tell me, how did you divide this question? Why I gave a, 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 a question from a past paper is that uh, some you could be, you should be uh, familiar with this so that it will be easy for you to tackle the question, right? Right, how did you, how did you uh, divide this question? So now when you talk about this question. Can somebody write and tell me how you have divided this? Yeah? How did you divide this question? For this question, we can agree with the statement or disagree as well. 
but we should support our answers with relevant points and suitable quotes. Very good. Very good. Yeah, for the short stories, you will get all four, don't worry. And you have to choose one. Right. So, Pilot of a Crane shows how human beings are caught between their desire for money and passion for love. So, this question has two parts. What are the two parts? What are the two parts? Humans caught by passion and humans... Yeah, okay, very good. So... These are the keywords. So what do you have to do? Underline the keywords. Desire for money, passion for love. This is your mind map now. Desire for money. What are the examples I know from the twilight about desire for money? What are the examples I know for passion for love? So here, if you list down, what will you list down? Yeah? Desire for money? You can talk about Unzu and envious Unzu and Sudu, how they um, enter the scene. Yeah. Yes. And then how they um, talk about this Sembauri thing. Yeah. We also see um, desire for money. Though Unzu and Sudu are friends, they are not genuine to each other. Yeah. So... Um, so you can talk about corrupted nature of these people, how they make Yo-Yo to be corrupted and develop desire for money in him also. You can talk about the capitalistic society. Yeah, and the quotation that is the context that is so earlier. In part one, what does he say? If, if she doesn't tell her that you will leave her. So all these negative things. Right? So you can talk about that. We see how yo yo's greed for money increases. Yeah? So we see how greed wins over love and innocence. Yo yo's desire to go to Kyoto. Yeah? He wants to earn. So what we see here are the symbols, different symbols. Right, Kyoto, it is a symbol, we know that. So what does it symbolize? What does it symbolize, Kyoto? We have different symbols in the, in the drama. What are the symbols there? Su symbolizes nature, right, passion for love. Yoyo -yo symbolizes innocence at the beginning, passion for love. And then, he is victimized by the money-minded vulgar people, desire for money. Then we also see Unzu and Sudu to be two corruptive agents who, um, you know, look into these commercial benefits. We see how these two vulgar characters make use of Yo-Yo's weakness, right? How he, um, how he was made to take Su's love as a weapon. He was made to, right? He was very good at the beginning. Yeah. Can we talk about, uh, uh, now when you talk about, you can talk about children also when it comes to passion for love. When it comes to Sembauri, Sembauri is also a symbol. At the beginning of the drama, it is a symbol of love and gratitude, passion for love. But towards the end of the drama, it becomes the money making object right and then we see the crane the symbol of good luck fortune prosperity right so we have sue on the side of passion for love where she is i mean she is uh, he, she symbolizes minimalism and we see these two vulgar characters and now Yo-Yo, um, you know, exercising consumerism, capitalism, right? So we see two identities always. Sue as a bird, Sue as a woman. And then we see Yo-Yo 
good and innocent at the beginning, but he becomes uh, bad and victimized right towards the end. Symbolically, also the same. We see, you know, different aspects. So when you talk about passion for love, so all these are desire for money. When you talk about passion for love, what do we see? What are the examples we can cite? Hmm? We see how Jo and Sue are introduced. The words that he uses, the darling words. Yeah. Um, how how we uh, um, how he talks about you know, of course, if it is not good for my sweetheart, um, then he says she is my darling, right? He doesn't agree at once. She says no. Sue doesn't like. She she won't weave anymore. She gets thin. Yeah. So he he says all these things. But then what do we see? Yeah. We see once um, once Yo Yo was victimized. How sad Sue feels. That's why she says in a, in a monologue, you were once an innocent. I was deeply touched by it, yeah. Then because of love, she begins to weave that symbolic, knowing that she would lose her life, right? So we say this drama is neither a comedy nor a tragedy. Comedy is a happy ending. Tragedy is a sad ending, right? Sad ending and happy ending. So it's neither a comedy nor a tragedy. It's not a sad ending because Sue goes back to her nature. Therefore, it is not a sad ending. It is not a happy ending because she uh, separates from the life, love life that she had. Yeah. And we also see Sue's request never look into the loom when I be. Right, so, so Yo-Yo's reluctance to weave more is also another example. Yeah, so Sue decides to put her health at risk in order to make Yo-Yo happy, enabling him to go to Kyoto. is also an example of passion for love. Right, is also an example of passion for love. Um, so. Any other examples? So what is the irony there, ultimately? He wanted to be happy. Therefore, he wanted one symbolic. He was given two. He was given two, but is he happy? That is the irony there. He was given two, but he's not happy. Right? So we see Kyoto as a symbol of uh, modernization urbanization, symbol of luxury, use those things. So what are the, what is the conclusion that you can write for, an, for a question like this? How can you write the introduction? Talk about something desire for money, passion for love. You can talk about how people in general in the modern era act. Yeah, you can talk about all these things. Um, yes. Uh, anything else? Any, anything to add to this? So we see Yo-Yo, yeah, Yo-Yo is reluctant. Beginning, Yo-Yo loves his wife a lot after becoming greedy. He threatens her. Yes, weave the cloth, right? Now he says it four times. Oh, I shall leave you. He's, at the beginning, he is very innocent. Yes, no, 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 nothing. But then what does he say? Finally, hmm? no, no, no. Then he, he's, he's on the fence. He doesn't know whether to um, ask or not because he wanted, because uh, the, the friends wanted and he also was enticed by them. So he says, no, no, no. Then see how gradually he developed. Leave the stuff right now. Oh, I shall leave you. See how much, see the power one he has. So literature is life. It teaches you lessons also. Right? It, it teaches literature. Money is not everything. So bear that in mind. Yeah? So people who fail to realize that end up like this. 
So can you talk about that also in your essay? The world around you, the society. Yeah, so that is what you should do. Right? Yes. And yeah, and anything else? Anything else to talk about it? Anything else? What else? Anything else to talk about it? Nothing. Okay, can I go to the next question then? Yeah, so I chose the bear because it was limited only to two hours. I chose so that I could talk a lot. So here the question is, do you agree? So you have to say you can take three stances. What are the three uh, um, stands that you can take? You can agree on this extreme. You can disagree on the other extreme and you can take the middle path. I partly agree, right? Whether you agree, disagree, or whether you partly agree, but you have to prove whether you agree, you can. You have 100% uh, freedom to disagree also, but you have to pre prove it from the text. It's not whether you agree or disagree, it's, it's how you prove from the text, right? So literature is a subjective subject. You look at it. That's why I told you, develop your uh, creativity, develop your high order thinking skills. Think, why, why not? So that it's easy for you to develop, okay? So a question like this, do you agree? You have to say whether you agree, disagree or not. So here the question is discuss. So what are the keywords here? What are the keywords here? Yeah. What are the keywords? Keywords. Huh? Uh, you want some time? Do this quickly. I also have a poetry question. We have about 10 minutes, I suppose. Organizers, do we have about 10 minutes? Shall I go to the next question, the, the, the answer there? If we are to, if we are to keep up with the time. Yes, miss. Okay, right. Right. So what are the keywords? What are the keywords? Yes. So this is my my map. You can write the way you want. And prioritize. Yeah, so expressed attitude is one, actual behavior is another. Okay, so presented through performance point of. So here, you know, express attitudes of Papua and Smanov. Right? So actual behavior of Papua and Smanov. So it's, you know, you have four things here. Expressed attitudes of Papua Smanov, again, actual behavior of Papua Smanov. So uh, you can compare also, comparing shows how good you are in your interpretation or in your, um, your high order thinking skill. Comparison, comparing is a good skill within half an hour, within 45 minutes, how much you are going to write, how you are going to analyze this. So this should be, this shows your practice, how much you have practiced. 
right? The difference between expressed attitudes and actual behavior. In other words, what is this? In other words, what is the question request from you? In other words. Hmm? Yeah. Express attitudes and actual behavior. What can you talk? Yeah. So what it what it appears to be, right? Actual behavior, the reality. Hypocrisy. So these are all the themes, even the previous one. Right? So your inconsistency. Your, um, your changing attitude, right? So always think of the theme or analyze it and see how it is, how the question can be, you know, broken down into different smaller parts. So this is one of the main themes, right? Inconsistency of human behavior. Yeah. So both are hypocrites. So on the other hand, this is what Anton Chekhov actually wanted to do also. Okay, so give me examples of expressed attitudes. Expressed attitudes. Hmm? Yeah. Expressed attitudes. So the first thing in your introduction, what you have to say is that the characters, these two characters are not stable characters, right? From the beginning to the end, we see how they change. Yeah. So you can use the keywords here. You can use the keywords here the expressed attitudes and actual behavior, put them in other words. If you can find our quotations outside the text, then they are also, you are welcome, right? So their relationship, how it was at the beginning and how it ends, right? How it is at the end, you can talk about these things also. So what are the points you can talk about? So it's a kind of compare, you know, Contrasting, we are going to compare. At the beginning, we see how Papua says that she is not receiving anybody. Right? And she says, for seven months, I've been here and, you know, yeah, she says, I'm going to receive anyone. But does she talk or doesn't she talk? She does, right? She talks to him and then, you know, goes up to a greater extent. Yeah. Then to show how much she loves her husband, what does she do? I'm within these four walls. I'm dead. I'm dead with him. All those things. Hmm? At a point, Papa says she hates Mono. But then finally, what do we see? Luca, Yes. You are, Luca, you are not to give any oats at all. So this horse in literature is a symbol of strength. Right? Yeah, Toby. To Toby, yeah. Right? So that shows at the beginning, two times she says, Luca gives her oats to Toby. But then she says, you are not to give anything. You are not to give any oats. That is the last sentence, right? So that also shows the expressed attitude and the actual behavior. Yeah? So, Sponoff was ready to uh, fight. Right? He was ready to fight. But what happens at the end? Hmm? Look at the words Papua uses. Scoundrel, uh, bourbon, but then she doesn't fail to notice the, 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 you know, she says your 
throat like you know your fist so she doesn't fail to observe these physical features of smog so these also could be you know yeah so we see her as a very uh, delicate woman weeping over lamenting the one who goes to the extent of fighting right shows a physical strength yeah um we see swana who was such a you know who said you have not forgotten to powder your face the one who was breaking the chair and now goes on his knees to beg for papa's love right so if we talk about expressed attitudes and actual behavior these are the facts we have to talk about right so how the chauvinistic uh, um, smanoff how the one who you know exercise patriarchal um, values you know man is the most important you know attitude like that he falls on his knees i he says i'm like a school boy right yeah so you um papua is mentally strong as mono is physically strong yes you are right papua so biologically also that is the truth no women are mentally strong and uh, men are physically strong so biologically also that is true right yeah so he uses words like you know very um, words which are not so this is the reflection of 19th century russian society as i told you men were given freedom legally by law they were given that freedom you can beat women you can you know um, so a lot of things so if you, you think of those things when you write other answers if you talk about female emancipation this is what anton chekhov wanted to do emancipate female from that slavery okay so this is what um, actually anton chekhov wanted to do change some kind bring about a change in this society so for that he chooses two powerful characters both are from upper class and see how nicely he brings both of them down right so strong papua she also changes imagine the other way had anton chekhov Uh, shown the weaknesses of these people at the beginning do you think 19th century men would have watched these things they would they might have said something else and gone away right so he makes his audience watch the drama and then bring some kind of a attitudinal change right okay let me go to the next question any questions regarding that so if if they talk about female emancipation give examples of female emancipation if they talk about humor talk about humor but same thing but you use in another you know it's a same wine in another bottle takes the shape of the bottle that's all but use it relevantly use it appropriately it has to be appropriate to the question use the keywords right now for example if you talk about humor now she says she doesn't know how to shoot but she comes with a pistol and the worst part one of teachers her to shoot how to shoot so somebody who wants to going to be shot by papua is teaching how to shoot so humorous right absurd behavior humor so put it that way yes and i'm going to the next question so this um you know we haven't got a question on this what is this poem what is this poem very good very good richard cory yes so richard cory robinson showcases that illusions are created by appearance so once again the theme appearance versus appearance versus complete that appearance versus complete it appearance versus reality very good so how can you very good 
So how can you talk about this? What are the keywords? Will you put your mind map quickly? Will you put your Edward Arlington Robinson? Very good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Draw your mind map quickly. We have not got a question on Richard Corey. Right. Done. We have about three, four minutes. We'll do this quickly and finish it. So when you talk about this, you can talk about people who, um, you know, had this kind of an ending, who have ended their life. Yeah, illusions, appearance, very good. Keywords are illusions, appearance, very good. Yeah, which doesn't mean happiness, very good. Exactly, you can quote, use, Cite from other sources, famous quotations, famous people. Now here you can talk about famous people who committed suicide. People, people who worship or people who admire and how their life ended. Hmm? Appearance is deceptive. Yeah. Right? So here... Illusions could be one, appearance could be one. So how did people look at Richard Corey? How did people look at Richard Corey? Yeah, how did people look at Richard Corey? Yeah, gentleman. Mm. Yes. He was similar to a king. Yes, very good. So these people in downtown looked up to him, right? He was gentleman from head to toe. That's how the poet says. He was a gentleman. He schooled in every grace, right? So we can cite examples. Uh, the, the, the people of downtown wanted to be like him, right? So if Look at how he observes every minute detail. When he walks, what happens? When he talks, how he talks, right? Um, right from soul to crown, top to bottom, which means completely. Yeah. So reality, what was the appearance? Illusion and what was the appearance? Hmm? Yeah. Outwardly, he was very nice. Handsome. People admired him. Hmm? But what was inside him? Yeah. For him to commit suicide, what do you think he would have gone through? Hmm? He was suffering, yeah. So these downtown people, they were together. But this one was all alone. That, that's why he, he might not have, have a friend also. Otherwise, he would have shared. Right? So loneliness, how people are burdened with problems, how people don't have people to share. Right? So also, you can talk about those things also. And... Um, what else? Yeah. Quietly arrayed, schooled in every grace. Hmm? And the poet says he was, what does the poet say? He was richer than a king. So hyperbolically, he, what does he stress? Right? 
So Robinson showcases that illusions are created by appearance. Examine. So you talk about illusion, you talk about how it is created, right? Yes, anything else? Yeah, so though he is rich, maybe he doesn't have friends. So totally, when you talk about section A, part one, section you have 30 marks, part B, you have 10, 40 there, then Two to thirteen, you have sixty marks. Fifteen into four, um, then hundred marks altogether. So as I as I told you, try your best to get your maximum possible mark for part one, right? And then you'll be able to do the rest. Part one, so yes. So this comes to the end of our session. Since it was two hours, I only picked and chose when I, I didn't want to take novel because that's diverse. If I take a poem, you have 20. And if I take um, prose also, you have four. So I chose dramas because it's compulsory compulsory as uh, as in you have to do your context and you have to choose one of the two for your essay type. Yes. Um, yeah, so all the best to you, right? So practice now with self, you have enough time. So practice makes somebody what? Hmm? What will you get when you practice? Yeah. Right, I'm glad. Thank you, ma'am, for helping us to improve. Okay. Thank you, teacher, for the effort. Thank you, teacher, for spending your golden time. Okay. Right. Mm. All right, Miss. Uh... Yes. Uh, thank you, Miss Michael, for that very educational session. Literature is based on like perspective and point of views, and it's intuitive to say that the insights that you gave us today definitely helped us and trained us, even with the smallest of details, like capitalizing the first letter of the author's name. So we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your, I'm very sure, busy schedule and helping us young students who are panicking with the exams coming around, it's like training us when it comes to all of these things, because myself included are quite nervous. Uh, so to conclude today's session, I do call uh the chairman of the english uh sorry i now call the chairman of the advanced english skills improvement unit akin the guna secret to deliver the vote of thanks over to you thank you adam a very good afternoon to you all guest lecturer mrs tanoja michaels principal sir deputy principals assistant principals senior master in charge of clubs and societies senior games master teacher in charge teachers prefix my dear fellow artists and my dear students. As the chairman on behalf of the Advanced Regal Skills Improvement Unit, it's my honor to express our heartfelt gratitude to those wonderful people who made this event a success. First of all, I would like to thank our guest lecturer, Mrs. Tanuja Michaels, for accepting our invitation with great enthusiasm and conducting the seminar in such manner. Thank you again, Madam. Taking, for taking time off your busy schedules and grooming these students to be the best in their subject matter. We are also grateful to our principal, sir, Mr. M. V. S. Gunathilaka, Senior Master in Charge of Clubs and Societies, Mr. T. D. C. P. Amaratunga, Senior Games Master, Mr. M. A. M. Riaz. Dear sirs, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your guidance and encouragement. Teacher in Charge of the Advanced English Skills Improvement Unit, Mrs. Vasana Vijayasinghe. Thank you, Madam, for supporting us to make this event a success. We are also grateful to our Prefix Council for helping and guiding us at all times, even during this pandemic period. Last but not least, we thank everyone who attended today's seminar. And I hope everyone got the best out of these two hours. And we hope that this seminar would surely help you in putting a good result in the ordinary level examination. 
I do humbly apologize if I had failed to mention any of the individuals who needed to be named due to the. Thank you and good night.